you have a serious problem with legalism. You don't know what legalism is. Biblical legal, legalism is when you add words to salvation. That's what legalism is. But if you stand on this Bible, they say, oh, you're a legalist. If you believe in dress modest like Miss Janie and, and, and my wife, you know what? They'll call you a legalist. That's not what a legalist is. A legalist is when you add words to salvation. When you say, well, you've got to be a good person to get saved. You, you got to get baptized to be saved. That's what biblical legal, legalism is. That's what they did in the Gospels when Jesus was talking to them. They were talking about that was legalism. That's being legalism. He says, I'll bet people, unregenerate, unsaved people will never come to your church. Your doctrine is twisted. Remember, as a preacher, you will be held accountable for what you preach. Then he quotes James 3.1, My brother, be not me, master. Know that we shall receive a greater condemnation. This is the end of the phone back. He's called us legalists because we dress modest, because we believe that this is God's inspired, preserved, infallible, inerrant word of God. If we have a final authority, he has no final authority. He says, I have a problem with many masters, but yet he's got God first in his life, he says. He goes dancing. He drinks alcohol. It's okay to listen to any kind of music. Uh, and, and so forth. What was that? Yeah. I've got one master. It's pretty obvious. I believe this book. I believe the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't have many masters. But anyway, I want to point that out so that when someone says, oh, you're you're just to get something bad with some musicians. No, I'm against sin. I hate sin. And I hate the devil. You say, you hate him? I sure do. I hate the devil. Not supposed to love him. I'm you ain't going to wait him to Christ. <laughs> supposed to hate him. He's one person that can't be converted. Well, the second reason, get into that. The second reason why I am not or would not be a Southern Baptist is because of their translation of their perversion. The translation of their perversion. I'm going to read some of this um, because I just can't cover it all without doing it. And I'm going to have to skip around because i got like 12 pages. Uh, may not get through with it. I don't, I don't know. Uh, the translation of their perversion. In 1999, the Southern Baptist Convention, they printed the Holman Christian Standard Bible. The Holman Christian Standard Bible. The letters for that is HCSB uh, in the Gospel of John. Then in 2000, the entire uh, New Testament was printed. And then in uh, 2002, uh, the New Testament with Psalms and Proverbs came out. Then in 2004, the whole Bible, what they call the Bible, uh, the, their whole in Christian standard Bible was available and, and, and put, put on their shelves at the Christian book, um, Lifeway Christian Bookstore, which is owned and operated by the Southern Baptist Convention. So they had a perversion that they printed themselves. And therefore, I have a real problem with that. And it's, and it's known as theirs. They own the copyright. It's theirs. They they sunk over ten million dollars into uh, in, in producing uh, a, a what they uh, call a good, accurate, reliable, readable translation. No, they spent wasted ten million dollars on writing another perversion that lines up with the Jehovah Witness Bible, the Catholic Bible, uh, in, in the Scholars Bible, and the rest of them. They all line up. And I can show you that scripture. They all take out the word begotten. They all take out the word Lucifer and put morning star there. Uh, and right on down the line. And so they, they're, they're, theirs is no different than anybody else's. Uh, it, it is a perversion of God's word. Uh, the H, I will say the Holman Christian Standard Bible, the Southern Baptist Convention, uh, in their Bible, it has four copyrights already. Since 1999, it has been, uh, has been edited and corrected already four times. I found out last night right before I went to bed, and I didn't have time to do any more writing, uh, that uh, they have already come out in 2010 with a second uh, edition. I don't know if it's going to be called the New uh, Holman Christian Standard Bible, but it will be out in 2010. They've already made all kind of changes in their accurate and this is what I don't understand. How can you write a, a, a Bible or what they call a Bible and say, oh, this is accurate, this is reliable, you can rely upon this, and six years later, oh, here's the new one. It's better than that one. 
And it's more reliable. Remember, they did that with the Revised Standard Version. Now we got the new Revised Standard Version. You know what? They'll come out with another one. They'll come out with a new one after this. Give them about four or five years. In fact, they say in the introduction of their Bible, there is always a need for a new one. You know why? They feel their pocket. You know what $10 million went to? He didn't go just to produce it, produce it. He went to fill somebody's pocket sitting on a translation committee. And I'm going to show you the same people sitting on this committee or sitting on other committees and you know, writing other Bibles like the English Standard Version. And they say, and when they wrote the English Standard Version, oh, this is the most accurate. Oh, it's reliable. I got the quotes. And then over here when they do this, oh, this is reliable. Now, this is the book of the future. And they're a bunch of liars is what they are. They're a bunch of liars. Filling their pockets. But anyway, they have four copyright dates. 99, 2000, 2002, and 2003. It has been revised four times. But if you ask them for a list of revisions, they won't give it to you. But you can take them and compare them. And there's differences and changes in those copyrights. But they um, have that. At least they're honest enough to tell you that in front of their uh, thing. Well, they won't tell you what they changed. Isn't that great? Wouldn't you think that you would want to know what you changed or what they changed? But they don't want you to know what they changed. They won't give you the list. The um, Holman Christian Standard Bible is based on the, and this goes in a little depth, um, on the, and I don't know if you understand what this is, but I'll try to explain it. Uh, the Holman Christian Standard Bible, and this is one of the major problems with it, it is based on the Nestle Allen Greek text, the 27th edition, and the United Bible Society's Greek New Testament, uh, the 4th edition and the 5th edition. Actually, these are basically identical except for a few uh, punctuations and so forth. These, my friend, are the corrupt Greek texts. They are corrupt. And they're corrupt, um, and, and they are not the majority. This is called uh, the critical Greek text, and then you have a major Greek text, which is what the King James Bible is based on. Uh, they, they base their, their Holy Christian Stamp Bible on about 44 or 45 uh, manuscripts. And they don't even greet with each other, and I, as I've said before. And, and two of the main ones that they uh, base this on is the uh, uh, Sinaiticus, which is called the Alpha, and then the, uh, the other one, which is called the uh, Vaticanus, which is called um, Manuscript B, called B and Alpha. And these two manuscripts uh, are corrupt, and they uh, they came out of um, the Vaticanus came, is basically out of the Catholic Church. That's where it's at now. If you want the copy? There's no copies. It's in the Vatican. It's in the Catholic Church. Now, anything that comes out of that Catholic Church is a problem. Look at the Methodists. Look at the Presbyterians. Look at the Episcopalians. Look at the Lutherans and so forth. They all carry with them problems. They all carry with them a false, um, a damnable um, heresy of that you got to be baptized. They, they christen little babies, and that's their salvation. You join the church because your mom and daddy, and therefore you're automatically going to heaven and so forth. All kinds of work salvation there. But this Vatican uh, manuscript that the Southern Baptists use um, to, to write their Bible is, is corrupt and full of errors. The Sinaiticus was found in a room full of bowls of skeletons, which is a good place to find some. It was found in a trash can because it had been thrown there because in the, in the manuscript uh, there was a bunch of markouts. They would, you know, it would be marked out. There would be a, places where it was erased, big blanks in the middle of verses uh, uh, things that were scratched out and changed in attitude and, and all kind of markings and it was just corrupt. But yet they say, oh, that's God's Word. How can you say that? How can you say that? If I were to give you a piece of paper or an article or something that I wrote and I were just to pass it through here and say, won't you make some corrections? Won't you do something you like? And you scratched out and say, this would be a better word and, and let's take this part out. I don't like that. That offends me. And, and let's, uh, let's add this to it. And then it, it had all kind of markings on it. And then I would say, hey, this is my art. Would it be my art? Would it be mine anymore? No, it would be corrupt. Because there would be all kind of markings in it. There would be all kind of additions and, and, and subtractions. And that's exactly what the Sinaiticus um, is when it was found uh, in, a, in a monk, some a tomb almost, with, with, uh, out in the middle of the desert. And, uh, it, and so therefore, it's corrupt. But yet they claim, oh, it's, it's the final authority. They say, that's it. But the fact is, it is corrupt. It has all kinds of problems with it. Uh, the Vaticanus, it gets its name uh, because it came from the Vatican 
uh, library. Before 1475, its whereabouts was unknown. Uh, I personally have a large collection of books, but I know basically what's in there. I don't have any Greek manuscripts hiding out of there. Um, their their, uh, their uh, thing was, oh, we found it. We didn't know it was in there. But anyway. you, you, you know normally what's in your refrigerator, right? You know if you got butter. Miss Jane, I bet you I can ask her some questions. and She could she, she, give me a very good idea of what's in your refrigerator. Uh, she would know she has mayonnaise and ketchup and maybe mustard and, and, and those types of things. And she would know if she has eggs and, and milk and, and cheese. You know, she, if I were to go in there and say, you know, you got a damn stoke in there. Don't you think she would know that? Sure she would. She would know if there's a dead skull. Well, that's exactly what the Vatican does. They got books in there. They no doubt. They got a library. They got books in there. And they said, we don't know this dead skull's in here. The fact is, they didn't know it. They've been correcting it and changing it. Only very few people have seen it. The people who've seen it, they said there's been corrections all through it. You know why? So they can add the Mass, and they can add the worship of Mary, so they can add their little beads, and they can add their purgatory, and they can add every kind of garbage in the world in there. That's why they keep it a secret. That's why they won't let anybody have it. Anybody don't need it anyway, to be honest with you. According to this Vaticanus, uh, it contains most of the Old Testament, although it is missing a bunch. How can it be accurate if it's missing something? Remember, this is what the Southern Baptists used to create their accurate, reliable, readable, and relevant Bible. It's missing a large portion of the New Testament, such as Matthew chapter 3, just Matthew chapter 3, don't be Hebrews chapter 9, verses 14 through chapter 13, it's almost four chapters through 25. Verse 25. It's missing all the pastoral epistles. Oh yeah, that's, that's very little. No big deal. Just 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, you know. No big deal. Just the pastoral epistles. And the book of Philemon, no big deal. It's so small one anyway. And the whole book of Revelation is not there. That's missing in the Vaticanus. And they say that's the perfect word. No, my friend. That's not the perfect word of God. Wow. You know why they don't want the Revelation to do? You know why they don't want all those things? Because it talks about what they what they do. The garbage they have. It talks about what a... What a, what a pastor is supposed to be. Don't mention any bishops and popes and garbage like that. Westcott and Hort, though, you ever heard of them? These, in my opinion, two lost men in burning in hell today, or today. Refer to the Vaticanus over all other manuscripts which ought to throw up a red flag if nothing else does. These two men have done more to corrupt the, the Word of God than probably anybody else. And if they think it's good, the Vatican is, and you bank on it, it ain't no good. The missing parts were copied. They, and they realized that there were some missing parts, Westcott and Gordon, like the book of Revelation, and the Philemon, and, and so forth, the epistle, the uh, pastoral epistles. They realized, so they, they, they copied them from other manuscripts, such as the Synaticans and so forth, therefore corrupting the whole thing. Again, you just don't mess with God's Word. In the Gospels alone, there are 749 entire sentences, 452 clauses, plus 237 words that have been left out in the Vatican. That's all. Not the whole books, but just 749 entire sentences. Are there any left? 452 clauses, plus 237 words. Well, that, that's got to be a lot of the, of the Gospel. The Gospel... Goodness. While hundreds of other manuscripts, like the original Texas Receptus, which is what the King James Bible is based on, the majority text includes all that. The book of Revelation, the pastoral epistles, the book of Philemon, all of Hebrews, Matthew chapter 3, all those verses, all those phrases, all those words. They're there. And they agree with one another. One thing about the other is that the two main manuscripts that this Holman Christian Standard Bible is based on the Synaticus